If you've recently learned to knit, you might think you're kind of stuck with scarves, pot holders, and other rectangles. But you've actually got all the skills you need to knit this beanie, because it's actually just a rectangle. So if you're an absolute beginner, stick around to the end of the video for a super detailed beginner tutorial. However, if you're looking at this and kind of thinking, okay, I already know how to knit that, but what dimensions do I need for my rectangle? Well, here they are. I made an average adult sized hat and the sizing you need to consider is the circumference around your head, which corresponds to the length of your rectangle. And you'll notice it doesn't fit like a Burger King crown, it's tight because there is stretch to the garter stitch fabric. And to account for that, the length is actually going to be shorter by about four inches than my actual head circumference. So that covers the length, but what about the width? For that, you'll need the hat depth, which is about the measurement from the top of your head to your ears. And it's helpful to have a chart for all the different hat sizes for this part. And guess who made a chart? Me! Link down below! This is one I actually made a long time ago, and it's more geared towards top-down, in-the-round crocheted hats. But the measurement for the hat depth is still helpful to determine the width of your rectangle. Just remember to take 4-5 to five inches off the circumference measurement on this chart if you're using the super stretchy garter stitch. And one last thing to consider. If you want to be able to fold over the brim, add 2-3 to three inches to that hat depth measurement on this or any other hat sizing chart. But if you have fairly average tension and want to make a hat just like mine with worsted weight yarn and 5.5mm needles, you'll cast on 36 stitches and knit until your piece is 18 inches, about 102 rows or 51 garter ridges since those are easier to count. So once you've got your rectangle, you'll bind off And you can leave a long tail here for seaming, but I'm actually going to cut my tail short because I have a long enough tail from my cast on. So it's time to seam the cast on and bind off edges together. The most seamless way to do this is with the mattress stitch, which I'll show you right now. You'll thread a tapestry needle and fasten on to the opposite corner, any old spot that looks good. And see how when I separate the garter ridges, there are these little horizontal V-shaped knit stitches between them. We're going to work under the stitches between the last garter ridge and the very edge. It can be kind of hard to see. But you can follow the little shape of this stitch to find both legs of the first stitch and work your tapestry needle under that stitch. And seam. Then come to the other side and find the bind off edge and work under the first stitch between that and the first garter ridge. See, I'm under both legs of the stitch, and now I can seam. Coming to the other side, find the next stitch, under both legs of the stitch, and seam. Find the next stitch on the other side, under both legs, and seam. Continue like this, seaming back and forth. It can be a little tedious, but the mattress stitch on garter stitch produces a really beautiful result. And the side facing you will be the right side of your hat. So once you've seamed up both ends together, you'll have a little garter stitch tube. And now we're going to change up our seaming method to close the top of your hat. You only need a little bit of yarn left. And you're gonna work your needle back to front, just through one of these loops on the edge of the work. And pull your yarn all the way through. Again, back to front, through another loop on the edge. It doesn't matter so much where you put your needle, just be sure to work back to front, pulling your yarn through, and working one or two times every so often between garter ridges. And once you've done this a few times, you'll start to run out of yarn, and you can actually pull on your yarn tail and your hat will begin to draw closed, giving you more yarn and starting to cinch the top of your hat. As you can imagine, once you've worked like this all the way along the top edge, you'll be able to draw the entire hat closed.
And to close up that little hole in the center, you can just thread your tapestry needle across the hole a few times, pull it real tight again, and then pop your tail through the center of the hat so it's on the inside, and you'll want to tie it off on the inside and cut it real short. And there's your flat hat that will stretch to fit a wide number of recipients. And it looks pretty darn cute. And all you needed to know besides the seaming that I just showed you was how to cast on, knit, and bind off. And if you don't know how to do that part, I'll show you right now. So welcome to the beginner portion of the tutorial, where you're going to start your hat with a long tail cast on. So pull out a pretty long tail with your yarn and make a slip knot. Place it on your needle, and that's your first stitch. We're going to grab both strands in our left hand and separate them with the thumb and index finger to make a heart. Work your needle under the left strand of the heart, over the middle strand, scoop up the third strand, and bring it through the loop on your thumb. Drop the loop off your thumb and tighten it up. And we can make another heart and do it again. Under, over, scoop up the third strand, bring it through the loop on your thumb, drop the loop off your thumb and tighten it up. Repeat this cast on or any cast on you know how to do until you have a total of 36 stitches, if you're working with the same yarn and needle size that I am, or however many stitches you need to get your desired hat depth for the size that you're working. With all your stitches cast on, it's time to knit. You'll put your needle with all the stitches on it in your left hand, and I also like to hold my working yarn in my left hand. Then we'll use the empty needle to knit into that first stitch. Insert the needle front to back through the front leg of that first stitch. Wrap the yarn counterclockwise around the needle and pull a loop through the first stitch. Once you've done that, you can let the old stitch drop off the left needle and you've knit one stitch. The tail for my cast on is a little loosey goosey, so I'm gonna hold on to it while I knit the next stitch. Again, front to back, wrap counterclockwise, pull through a loop and let the old stitch drop off. And I'll continue knitting every stitch just like that, scooching up the stitches in my left needle as I go. You'll simply knit every stitch all the way to the end, including that very last stitch. And now you've knit your first row, and you just need to do that about a hundred more times, literally. So move the needle with the stitches back into your left hand to knit the next row. And you'll work right into that first stitch, just like we did on the previous row. And if you're new to knitting, you're gonna get lots of practice doing this because like I said, we'll need about 120 rows to reach the 18 inches required for the hat circumference. Although it's very normal to have really tight or really loose tension when you're first starting out. So it could be a different number of rows for you. But when you've reached 18 inches, it's time to bind off. And to do that, you'll knit the first two stitches normally, and pass the first one over the second one. Again, knit a stitch, and with two stitches on your right needle, pass the first one over. It's very easy to bind off too tightly because of how much tension you have to get on the yarn to pass that stitch over, which can kind of make your work pucker and be too narrow on this end of your rectangle. So try not to bind off too tightly, but fortunately, seaming your two ends together after will help hide any tension issues in your bind off. And once you've bound off all your stitches, you can pick up again at the seaming instructions from earlier in the video. So I hope you enjoyed this flat two needle hat making method. And if you did and haven't seen my flat slipper sock video yet, be sure to check that video out next. And let me know what other project you'd love to see done flat on two needles, cause I love figuring out ways to do that. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.